China is pouring billions of dollars into countries in sub-Saharan Africa. Thousands of miles of roads and railways are being built, trade deals and infrastructure projects are popping up across the continent. And while all of this is happening, China is bugging government offices, taking advantage of the African people, and manipulating the economies of nations. China's plans to revolutionize Africa are not selfless. In fact, every decision Beijing makes on the continent is calculated, done for profit, and to gain more power. In 2018, the Chinese government renewed its pledge to provide $60 billion in economic assistance to Africa. This is a huge sum of money for a continent that's separated from China by the Indian Ocean. During the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation in 2021, China dialed back its economic assistance to $40 billion. However, this is still a massive sum of money. China receives about $200 billion in imports from Africa each year, most of which are natural resources such as fossil fuels and metals. It should come as no surprise, due to these investments, that China is the leading trade partner of almost every African country. There are currently around 10,000 Chinese firms operating in Africa, all of which are controlled in one way or another by Beijing. This has resulted in a total valuation of Chinese companies operating in Africa to be about $2 trillion with $300 billion in business investments. And as crazy as it sounds, Africa is now a larger market for Chinese construction projects than Asia. Just to be clear about how much money China is investing in Africa, analysts went through Chinese loan records between 2000 and 2020 and found that financiers had committed to 1,188 loans, totaling $160 billion. The loans were typically given for transportation, energy, mining, and communications ventures. Over this time period, the top loan recipients were Angola, Zambia, Ethiopia, Kenya, Nigeria, and Cameroon. However, more recently, China has been providing an increased number of loans to Ghana, South Africa, and the Ivory Coast. But the amount of money and number of loans given by China to African countries isn't the only indicator that Beijing has big plans for the continent. Prior to the pandemic, China's top officials made 79 visits to 43 different African countries. China also has around 53 embassies in Africa, which is more than any other non-African nation. On top of all this, at least 52 African countries have signed on to be a part of China's Belt and Road Initiative to help bring Chinese goods and trade to markets across the world. So, what exactly is China revolutionizing in Africa? Let's look at where the money that China is providing is going and what this means for Africa's future. Then, we'll analyze why China is investing so heavily in the continent. As you probably already know, this is not an altruistic venture. China wants some key things from Africa, and it doesn't care who it hurts or how much land gets destroyed in the process. China mainly contributes to infrastructure and development projects in Africa. That being said, many of these ventures were only started to give Chinese companies easier access to the natural resources of the continent. However, Beijing has had its hand in a number of different projects throughout several different countries. For example, in 2022, China began building a new headquarters for the African Center for Disease Control in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. This facility cost $80 million to construct and was formally under contract with American companies. However, China managed to take over the project and with it increased its favor with not only the Ethiopian government but other African leaders as well. China has been pouring money into rail and roadways in Africa for some time. The Nairobi-Mombasa Standard Gauge Railway was planned to cost China $4.7 billion and would connect industrial areas in Kenya with major ports in Mombasa. This railway was supposed to make the movement of resources more efficient and therefore result in an influx of money for Kenya. Unfortunately, the railway has been underutilized and is now operating at a loss, which has led the Kenyan government to owe China a huge sum of money. In fact, China is Kenya's largest creditor and holds around 22% of the country's entire external debt. And even when the Kenyan government promised its people that the modern Chinese-funded railway would bring them prosperity and wealth, 87% of the population believed its government was borrowing too much money from Beijing. And it turned out they were right. What happened in Kenya is a common occurrence throughout Africa when dealing with China. There's no denying that Chinese companies are infusing huge amounts of money and resources into the infrastructure of developing African nations. But at what cost? Oftentimes, these projects are left either incomplete or unused, leaving many African nations with useless infrastructure and a lot of debt to pay off. There have been around 400 Chinese investment projects in Ethiopia. Together, these projects cost more than $4 billion. Some reports indicate that China has been responsible for building up to 70% of the roads in Ethiopia, along with the Addis Ababa Djibouti Railway, which connects the landlocked country to the Durale multi-purpose port in Djibouti. 
All of this construction has unsurprisingly left Ethiopia with crippling debt, much of which is owed to China. The IMF estimates that Ethiopian debt ratio is around 60% of its total gross domestic product. China's also invested in projects that go beyond just ground transportation and literally reach the stars. The Chinese space program operates out of nine African countries – Angola, Algeria, Ethiopia, Egypt, Namibia, Mozambique, Nigeria, South Africa, and Sudan – all have Chinese-built facilities where Chinese satellites are launched into space and monitored. Some of these countries also house space training facilities. Kenya and Namibia contain China's ground-based satellite tracking stations on the continent. These facilities likely brought in money to each of the nations, but it's not clear how much the African people benefited from them. African laborers were likely used in the construction process, but beyond the initial building period, the African people and governments have probably seen very little monetary benefit. With the expanding presence of the Chinese Space Agency in Africa, Beijing hopes to incorporate more of the countries on the continent into their Belt and Road Space Information Corridor. Besides infrastructure and space projects, China's invested in modernizing Africa's technology and communications networks as well. The Chinese telecommunication giant Huawei has built around 70% of Africa's information technology sector. Along with ZTE, Huawei has 40 telecommunication networks in over 30 different African countries. These two companies are also responsible for government networks in around 20 countries on the continent, meaning that the Chinese government almost certainly has direct access to government servers and databases. When we look at what certain nations in Africa are contracting Chinese companies to build, things get a little unnerving. President Yoweri Museveni of Uganda signed a $126 million contract with Huawei to create a smart city surveillance network so his police force could monitor the general population in the capital of Kampala. It's highly unlikely the Ugandan government will use this surveillance network solely to ensure the safety of its citizens. Instead, it'll likely be used to infringe on basic human rights and suppress any opposition to the current administration. But Uganda isn't the only African country that's implemented surveillance systems sold to them by the Chinese. Botswana, the Ivory Coast, Ghana, Kenya, Mauritius, Morocco, South Africa, and Zambia all use Chinese-built safe city systems to monitor their populations. It's important to note that these surveillance networks can be used for good, such as for tracking criminals and bringing bad actors to justice. However, it's not clear if this is how they're being used. It's also worth mentioning that the Chinese companies who install these networks also likely provide access to information gathered by the surveillance networks to Beijing. China's also provided military assistance to African countries. It doesn't necessarily make them safer, but instead results in an influx of deadly weapons that sometimes end up in the hands of extremists or mercenaries. In 2017, Beijing promised $100 million in military aid to the African Union and its 55 member states over five years. During the same time period, China sent approximately three times more weapons to Africa than the United States did. The countries of Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Namibia, Seychelles, Tanzania, and Zambia received over 90% of the arms sent by China. China has also been sending its own troops to Africa in the form of UN peacekeeping operations. Between 2005 and 2020, Beijing more than doubled the number of Chinese troops in Africa, bringing the total to around 2,500 personnel. Almost all of the Chinese peacekeeping soldiers sent abroad are stationed in Africa. What all this means is that China is investing heavily in Africa in multiple ways to modernize its infrastructure and strengthen its position in the region. And to be fair, many African governments welcome Chinese money and trade agreements. In a world with a global economy and rapid advances in technology, it is no surprise that many African nations will do whatever it takes to pull themselves out of the poverty that resulted from centuries of colonization. China offers funds with few restrictions and important trade deals that the rest of the world just isn't providing. The downside is that Beijing then holds a lot of influence over these governments. But if the goal is to modernize a country and grow its economy, China appears to be providing the best deals to African governments. Unfortunately, looks can be deceiving. These massive construction projects and infrastructure improvements have resulted in countless human rights abuses. This is because China is more than happy to turn a blind eye to atrocities carried out in the name of progress. Western funds often come with stipulations and oversight. The same cannot be said about Chinese investments. What many African governments are looking to do is emulate the rapid and continued economic growth of China. The Chinese government has managed to create the second largest economy in the world, even if it has been done at the expense of its citizens and the planet. We now know what type of investments and projects China has contributed to in Africa. It's clear that their plans to revolutionize the continent are not being done for altruistic reasons. 
but to gain power and influence. So let's now examine what China is getting from Africa. Why exactly has it invested so much time, effort, and money into a continent that is thousands of miles away? There are four main reasons – procuring natural resources, implementing soft power, strengthening diplomacy, and improving China's security. Natural Resources The primary reason why China is investing so heavily in Africa is because the continent has a vast amount of resources that can be obtained cheaply. China's rapidly growing economy and desire to become a superpower one day means that they will need a lot of resources. Although China has been able to procure much of the natural resources it needed from within its borders in the past, it can no longer sustain itself without going abroad. In particular, China is using African countries for their oil, natural gas, and coal. In 2020, it was estimated that China imported around 10,850,000 barrels of oil a day, which is almost double the 5,900,000 barrels of oil the United States imported daily. This is why China has heavily invested in oil-rich countries such as Sudan, Angola, and Nigeria. In order to ensure African oil continues to flow into China, Beijing has sought to sign deals and investments that give China direct access to oil fields, mines, and production facilities in African countries. In some situations, the loans that China offers to African governments can be paid back by giving Beijing oil and other natural resources. This may seem like an enticing offer for some governments, but in reality, it's just a way for China to get exactly what it wants for a cheap price. But China has also invested in some African countries to procure other resources, such as metals. Zambia is Africa's second largest producer of copper on the continent. The metal accounts for around 70% of the country's revenue. However, China began to exploit the nation several years ago by providing infrastructure funds in return for access to the copper mines. China has offered over $6 billion in bilateral loans, and now about 65% of Zambia's external debt is owed to China. When Zambia couldn't pay back its debt, China demanded that the country hand over its copper mining assets to Chinese businesses as collateral and debt forgiveness. China then restructured the debt to allow for future investments while simultaneously procuring more exclusive access to Zambia's copper mines. And China is not just exploiting the lands of Africa, they've also extended into the sea. Nearly two-thirds of China's fishing vessels engage in illegal fishing practices in West Africa. This has caused a rapid decline in fishing stocks and led to the collapse of several coastal ecosystems. 60% of China's distant water fishing is done off the coast of West Africa, with the industry estimated to be worth around $5 billion. This brings in profit for Chinese companies and the government while also providing much-needed sustenance to meet the dietary needs of their 1.4 billion people living within the borders. Along with procuring natural resources, China also uses Africa to increase its own exports. China's invested heavily in African ports to ensure that their cargo ships have easy access to the continent. For example, China owns around 25% of the Dorla Container Terminal in Djibouti, where huge amounts of goods are offloaded for sale throughout Africa. This isn't a one-off case, however, as Chinese companies have been buying up trade facilities across Africa to allow for more trade. It's also been suggested that China may even see Africa as a way to restructure its economy and move it away from labor-intensive manufacturing. Soft Power Soft power is when a nation or government uses its influence to shift or shape the perception of others. In this context, China is trying to influence the people of Africa to view it more favorably through things like investments, job creation, and access to products. One way that China is doing this is by financing African political leaders so if they're elected, they can push a pro-Chinese agenda. Between 2011 and 2015, China provided financial support to as many as 200 African politicians. Beijing also announced it'll finance as many as 1,000 young African politicians by 2018, and in 2022, it opened a Communist Party of China education center in Africa. Another way to shift the African people's perception of China is by creating schools. The Office of Chinese Language Council International has built over 60 schools in Africa. The Ministry of Commerce has also constructed learning centers that offer professional training for adults, along with facilities that provide vocational training. These installations were opened to show that China is there to help the African people grow their economies and succeed. It's highly probable that China does want African countries to become more prosperous and industrialized so they can form trade partnerships with more lucrative markets. However, using these learning centers and schools also allows China to sculpt the perception of the people using them to favor Beijing. Hanban, which is also known as the Confucius Institute headquarters, is another name for the Office of Chinese Language Council International. Hanban scholarships are offered to people from Africa to study in China. 
26 times more scholarships have been given out annually than just 12 years ago. The only country in the world that has more African students than China is France, but this gap is quickly closing. In 2021, the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation offered 50,000 scholarships and training opportunities for African citizens to study in China. And what it comes down to is that every person who's given the opportunity to succeed or learn from China will be much more likely to look favorably at Chinese ventures in Africa. Beyond education and training, China's also developed soft power by being one of the only nations that's investing in the infrastructure of certain African countries. A lot of these investments result in huge financial burdens for those who are being lent money, but the average African person only sees job creation and the influx of money coming to their community. Then there's the fact that China is using its monetary influence to bring African governments to their side. Chinese companies have provided the funds for or constructed around 24 legislative buildings for government leaders, 26 parliamentary offices, 32 military and police facilities, 19 foreign affairs buildings, and over 14 intra-governmental telecommunications networks. Beijing's also been pumping funds into expanding Chinese state-run media in Africa. In 2009 alone, China earmarked $6.6 .6 billion for investment in news and media in Africa. It's thought that the external propaganda budget of China at that time was around $10 billion, meaning that almost 70% of the budget was dedicated to controlling the perception of the African people. Diplomacy China holds a lot of power and influence over certain African governments because of the amount of debt they owe. There have almost certainly been deals made that require African governments to side with Beijing on the global stage in return for investments and funds in the future. This has resulted in much of Africa backing China in a number of international votes and disputes. One perfect example of this is that every single country in Africa recognizes Beijing's One China policy. That makes sense as it's a prerequisite for entering trade deals and diplomatic relations with China. China is currently using Africa as a way to test tactics on how to export its one-party political system to other developing parts of the world. China is also pushing African countries to follow its state-led economic growth policies that allow the nation to prosper. What all of this means is that China is recruiting more and more nations to adopt an authoritarian form of government, which will make dealing with African countries easier for Beijing, while simultaneously pushing them away from Western democracies. On the international stage, Africa has overwhelmingly supported China on a number of initiatives. 39 African governments sided with Beijing on their expansionist tendencies in the South China Sea, even though the United States and international tribunals condemned China's actions. As of 2018, countries in Africa only sided with the United States on important UN resolutions approximately 29% of the time, while they sided with China much more frequently. In 2020, when the UN Human Rights Council voted to condemn the controversial Hong Kong national security law, 25 African countries supported China. This was the most nations on any continent to take China's side. So it's clear the investments and funds China has dedicated to Africa have greatly swayed the way countries on the continent vote. It also shows just how influential China has become. Security China needs to make sure its investments and natural resource procurement in Africa are safe. This is one of the reasons it's played such an active role on the continent. The stability of the region is key to China's economic and political plans. It's gone as far as to hire private security contractors and detain African military personnel to protect their own interests. This helps maintain the security and feasibility of its overseas projects. If the region becomes destabilized, then the natural resources China relies on that come from Africa could be put into jeopardy. One of the main ways to keep this from happening is by providing monetary incentives and weapons to certain organizations in Africa. This allows China to increase its security on the continent while keeping its visible military presence relatively low. However, intelligence reports indicate that China may be planning to build military bases across Africa in the future. In December 2021, China planned to construct a military base in Malabo, Equatorial Guinea. Since Equatorial Guinea's debt to China is around 50% of its GDP, there was very little the government could do to stop the military base from being built. The U.S. Department of Defense reports also indicate that China may have plans to construct military bases in Angola, Tanzania, Kenya, and the Seychelles as well. China's power over many of these governments as they have helped to quell opposition to their own power, and they've provided facial recognition technology to Zimbabwe, communications monitoring to Uganda, and built communication control centers in Kenya and Zambia. Huawei gave the government access to the phones and Facebook pages of opposition bloggers criticizing the former president, Edgar Lungo. These bloggers were eventually found and arrested. 
In 2017, China built its first overseas military base in Djibouti, right next to where the only U.S. military base is located on the entire continent. A year later, the U.S. accused China of operating illegally in international airspace and firing high-powered lasers that injured U.S. aviators. What it comes down to is that China is expanding its military presence in Africa while also funding militant groups and mercenaries to protect and grow their interests. The fact that many governments in Africa are in debt to China means there is very little they can do to stop Beijing from doing whatever it wants. Let's now examine how the African people view what China is doing and if the modernization of the country is actually benefiting them. In much of Africa, China's actions and investments are viewed positively. This is especially true in governments that lean toward authoritarian rule. The average person's perception is often influenced by the soft power tactics that were discussed earlier. Many African people also see China as a developing nation that has not reached its peak. Along with this, the fact that China is not a European colonizer or US ally definitely makes the people of Africa more trusting of Beijing. The reality is that many African people see European and American companies as evil because of the way they've treated the African continent and its people in the past. However, not everyone in Africa is happy with what China is doing. Labor unions and civil rights groups speak out against the poor labor conditions, unsustainable environmental practices, and exploitation that come with Chinese investments and projects. Government leaders who are not corrupted by Chinese money point out that the deals China offers will inevitably leave their country with huge amounts of debt. Opponents of Chinese expansionism in Africa voice their concerns that what Beijing is doing is just a different type of colonialism, where the land is stripped of its natural resources and in return, the African people are forced to pay for the Chinese goods that were made using materials from their own country. But it's hard to fight against a country with as much money, economic power, and influence as China. Pro-Chinese propaganda campaigns are spewed across the media sources they control. Access to unbiased information is limited by the Chinese-controlled communication networks on the continent. Yes, China is helping to build infrastructure and boost the economies of certain African countries, but at what cost? People are being exploited, the land is being stripped of its resources, and the environment is being destroyed. China may be revolutionizing Africa, but it's not being done in a sustainable way. Beijing's goal is to control the governments of the continent so that procuring resources and boosting its own economy will be easier. And as of right now, China is succeeding. Now watch why there is no bridge between Europe and Africa, or check out China's plan to take over the world.